Um, this kind of just outlines what our timeline looks like. Again, we launched in April of 2013. That first release we codenamed Hydrogen. Um, it came out in February of this year. Uh, then we started working on Helium, the second release. Helium just released at the beginning of October. Okay, so it's about a month old. So we're just now um, still building out our release plan for Lithium, our next release. Um, again, the dates for lithium and beryllium are tentative because obviously we haven't uh, finalized those, so I have to put that caveat out there. Um, but it's looking like it's going to fall somewhere in the middle of next year for, for lithium, probably June. Um, but again, over the next two weeks, actually, the, the technical steering committee will finalize that plan. <coughs> And for us, that's actually kind of nice because it's going to map up really well with uh, the work that's going on inside of OpenStack for Kilo. And we have strong aspirations that I'll get to with, uh, with that collaborative work. So talking about the Helium release in particular, um, so this is the architectural diagram. Again, if you kind of map out the application space on top, the, the services space in the middle, and then the blue boxes down along the bottom are the, uh, the southbound protocols that we support. Um, so hydrogen, as well as helium, have a specifically an OpenStack service that interfaces to the, to the ML2 mechanism driver for, for uh, Neutron. Um, and underneath that, we have a variety of virtualization technologies that can be chosen, um, one or the other. Uh, in addition to that, for helium, uh, we spent significant time uh, just building out the stability, the scalability, and the performance of the core controller. Um, as you can imagine, with the first release, it was really about getting everybody together, getting the code base together, and you know, showing that we can put something out with hydrogen. Second release, Helium, was really about, again, continuing to uh, allow new features to come in, but also hardening what we had had to begin with. And that will be a trend as, as our project continues to mature. Again, not so different from OpenStack. Um, from a new feature standpoint, we've added uh, some security aspects. So if you look along the top bar there, there's um, AAA, which is uh, authentication, authorization, and accounting. Um, and that's managing the, the, the access to the northbound interface or to the API interface to the controller. In addition, we've added, um, say, uh, uh, um, secure network booting uh, infrastructure. So certificate-based uh, authentication of the network elements that are actually connecting to the controller. And this is done at boot. So we've got security both from the bottom end with the network devices, as well as at the application and the user level. Um, next, we, uh, we uh, added uh, table type patterns uh, as support for OpenFlow 1.3. Um, OpenFlow 1.3 is a protocol uh, version uh, continued version of the OpenFlow protocol that really allowed for um, some additional capabilities inside of switches to be exploited by the protocol. Uh, one of the problems uh, with the early versions of OpenFlow was that it only had one table lookup, so you, could, you couldn't really um, make decisions on multiple different criteria uh, for the packets that were coming in. So uh, the ability to have different table lookups and kind of cascade them and put them in a pipeline um, was something that 1.3 introduced. Uh, but then that introduced a level of complexity and flexibility that uh, actually made the, 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 the um, implementation of it difficult. So table type patterns is just a way of mapping you know, what type of pipeline you can build and support inside your switches. And then that can match up to the controller so that those types of flows from the controller to the switch can be mapped. So it's a, it's a, it's a nice extension. Uh, to the controller to be able to, again, leverage uh, OpenFlow 1.3 as best it possibly can. Um, in addition, we've also had a, a, a couple of other services, one being group-based policy that was added, as well as service function chaining. Um, those are both additional uh, northbound API and service capabilities, uh, some of which uh, map nicely to activities that are going on inside of OpenStack. Um, in particular, group-based policy. And uh, we hear a lot about uh, network function virtualization and the leverage of OpenStack as well as Open Daylight to actually do that for the carrier and the telecommunications market. And service function chaining is a key piece of that. Uh, it's really about being able to map um, different functions uh, and have the, the traffic be engineered so that it flows through each one of those virtual machines with the different functions. 
um, in a serial manner. So in addition, um, so we have a controller federation feature that's also been added to the helium release. Um, and that actually leverages uh, the BGP protocol um, so that different instances of open daylight controllers can share topology information across one another. Uh, we also have a couple of new protocols that were added. One is actually uh, a plug-in to um, Open Contrail, um, and that was contributed by Juniper. So you can actually manage Open Contrail um, controlled networks from Open Daylight. Um, and then in addition, the, the folks from Cable Labs came and uh, contributed a, a, a packet cable multimedia um, protocol, which allows them basically to not only manage their networks and their network connectivity with Open Daylight, but also some level of management of the actual set-top boxes or the endpoint devices that sit inside of the cable network. So Helium-specific improvements, um, or I'm sorry, OpenStack-specific improvements that we did in Helium, um, we really wanted to come up and have better feature compatibility um, and parity with what's available inside of Neutron. So uh, the addition of uh, security groups, um, uh, DVR, distributed or uh, virtual routing, load balance as a service, as well as ARP responder were things that were added to the OVSDB integration. Um, again, managing Open vSwitch, uh, through both OpenFlow and the OVSDB protocol are one of the aspects or the characteristics of um, Open Daylight and what it can manage. Um, again, in addition, um, there's a group-based policy activity going on inside of OpenStack. Uh, we built out the initial framework to be able to be compatible with that um, uh, group-based policy invocation with the group-based policy activity that's going on inside of Open Daylight. Um, and again, it's, it's interesting to recognize that you know, Open, OpenStack is a very important um, northbound application for uh, the Open Daylight SDN controller, but certainly the, the, uh, an SDN controller can and will be used in a variety of situations where a cloud virtualization layer may not necessarily be on top. So aspirations for lithium and kilo. Uh, we had a session yesterday. Uh, specifically talking about how we can continue to collaborate. Um, one area for us is we want to really expand both the breadth and the depth of our continuous integration testing that we're doing. Uh, we are a third-party um, uh, uh, CI site for OpenStack and have been since, uh, well, for the past eight or ten months or so. Um, but we really want to continue to build out the use cases for our continuous integration um, with, the, with the, the OpenStack community. Um, additional clustering and scalability testing are also very important to us, uh, as well as um, further integration of uh, our OVSDB project, virtual tenant networking, which is another virtualization uh, technology inside of Open Daylight, the group-based policy, and the service function chaining. Uh, getting all of those better tightly integrated into, into Neutron are areas that we'll be focusing on, uh, hopefully with members of the OpenStack community as, uh, as Kilo and Lithium uh, development progress. Uh, additionally, from a new feature standpoint, um, right now we, we do support controller restarts from Neutron, but there are places where it just needs work, um, better state maintain or state maintenance um, of, uh, of the status of the controller when those restarts occur uh, is one area. Uh, doing full bi-directional rest calls is another area for us that we want to focus on. Um, as well as improving those uh, capabilities of the uh, distributed virtual routing, load balances of service, group-based policy, and, uh, and service function chaining. Um, and so with that, that, those are the areas where we really want to focus. Uh, I know we've got lots of folks inside of the Open Daylight community that want to be working on these pieces. Um, we're continuing to really solicit uh, participation and collaboration from the OpenStack community as well. So if any of those activities and management of your virtual and physical networks underneath uh, Neutron and underneath OpenStack are something that's interesting to you or your organization, I, uh, I uh, strongly recommend and encourage you to come join uh, these activities that we'll be working on through this next cycle. Uh, ways to get a hold of uh, the Open Daylight Project, again, www.opendaylight.org. Um, Wiki.opendaylight.org is where all the development activity occurs. Um, and then uh, on Twitter as well for up-to-date uh, activities. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention.